what effects does the moon have on nature? This is the question I would like to start with. This question does not refer to the effect of the moon on the tides, but rather the effect it ultimately has on living things, their life cycles, their reproductive periods, their physiology, or any behavior that they may express to, to the moon. I had the opportunity to work with Essin Uskuplu under the mentorship of Steve Thor and Dr. Ashif Khan with the collaboration of Dr. Jason Podgorowski. My name is Clayton Vanegas, and I will present to you our search for circular periodicities in living organisms over the last three months. So, what effects does the moon have on living organisms? For a long time, the only answer were magical legends about wearables, for example. Personally, however, the scientific community has corrected course and taken this question from a rigorous approach. And if you don't have any answer to this question, let me show you some examples. Lunar orientation in sandhoppers affected by shifting both the moon phase and the daily clock. Celestial moderation and tropical sea seabird behavior. Moonlight pollination in the gymnosphere ephedra. The still dark side of the moon, molecular mechanisms of lunar controlled rims and clocks. These are quite interesting relationships, and they are just a small set of examples of all the relationships we managed to find in the first part of this project. Initially, we conducted a bibliographic research to create a database with species of living beings that have some relationship with the moon. We reviewed about uh, 56 scientific articles and part of two books. With this information, we create a phylogenetic tree that shows the relationship of all these living beings. In total, we found 159 species of animals that have some kind of relationship with the moon in nine different phyla, ranging from sponge to cordates. So, we have the film Porifera, Cnidaria, Senacoelomorpha, Arthropoda, Platelmintes, Anelida, Mollusca, Echinodermata, and Cordata, presenting rings that are related to the moon. But how can we classify this relationship to better understand and study them? First, we have to establish the definition of a synodic month. The synodic month is one that uses the lunar phases as a reference and it has a duration of 29 up to 30 days until the next new moon occurs. From this, we can understand the kinds of lunar biological cycles, that is, the rings controlled by the moon. The first kind of cycles is the circular cycle, which has a duration of approximately 29.5 days. The second kind of cycles is the semicircular cycle, and has a duration of 14.8 days. And the third, third type of this is the circa tidal cycle, which has a duration of 12.4 uh, uh, hours. These cycles often depends on internal biological clocks, whose exact method of functioning has not yet been explained with certainty. And in this moment, you can maybe have this question, why are we interested in rings? So, if you think life is sustained through cycles and periodicities, or solar system is sustained through cycles and periodicities, so these rings are the point where life and the universe synchronize. And due to the influence of the moon in the sea, many fish exhibit one of the cycles including fishes of economic interest, for example, Atlantic herring, Atlantic salmon, and Atlantic cod. In our project, we were interested in finding out whether the fish Astrofundus linaeus also exhibited such a periodicity. We used data collected by Dr. Rodrowski in his laboratory in Portland, and the unique thing about this data is that the fish had no environmental cues. They will keep in pairs in aquariums with definite temperatures and established light and dark cycles. So, we analyzed 
57,468 data points, corresponding to the egg legend of 17 generations of the fish over nearly 20 years. The goal was to find some periodicity, lunar or non-lunar, in their egg spawning. So we divide the analysis in four, into four parts, synodic analysis, previous analysis, seasonal anode analysis, and age analysis. So let's take a quick look at the periods analysis. When I started managing the database, I came across large gap of the time in which no data were collected. Obviously, we decided to eliminate them and analyze the nine time periods of continued data collection. So due to the variability of some factors, such as initial age of data collection, time of collection in each generation, et cetera, between these time periods, it was no surprising to find no visible periodicity preserved between them. However, the next analysis, the synodic analysis, was different. As I mentioned, it, the synodic month has uh, 29, 30 days. We arbitrarily assigned the new moon the value of one. This way, we were able to assign an ID for each day of the lunar cycle. So, we analyzed data from 2018, 2019, 2022, and 2023, as these were years of continuous escalation and counting. And we found that near full moon egg production is 23% 23 higher, 23 higher than the monthly average, a fact not to be underestimated. The next uh, analysis was the age analysis. And I found that there were 17 generations, generations of fish. Some generations lived longer than others, or for some reason, there were no, there were no records for them. And we found that some generations present this uh, periodicity of great amplitude through their life in relation to the number of eggs produced at a given age. For the moment, we don't, we don't know the reason behind this periodicity. But the incredible results don't end there. My partner in this project used the data filtered in this analysis for the seasonal annual analysis. She will present her results in her pre-records presentation. And I invite you to wait for her presentation to hear the results of her analysis. So in this project, we had the following results. We generate a, det a detailed database of 159 species of animals that exhibit some behavior in relation to lunar phases. We found a possible circular lunar cycle in the fish Astrophonus gymnaeus. And we found a possible periodicity of egg spawning in relation to age in the fish Astrophonus gymnaeus. I would like to end this presentation again with the initial question. What effects does the moon have on nature? I hope that you are now more intrigued by this question and the consequence that it's un that its answer generates. Nature is more dependent on the moon than we thought. We are not only a planet that depends on its stars, we are also a planet that depends on its satellite. So thank you very much for, it, for your attention and I will be grateful to answer your questions. Fantastic. Great job, Clayton. I see a hand up already. Again, for those watching, you can ask questions in the chat or raise your hand and I can call on you. I'll start with Itziar. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes. Hello. How are you guys? Hi. Uh, Hi. I do have a question for Clayton. Yeah, yes. And is, uh, is there any known genetic expression process related to these biological rhythms? That's a great question. In fact, we reviewed just one article that about that was about that topic, and uh, they made an experiment in uh, sea coral, and they found that there is a, a difference in the genetic expressions in the nine with full moon and the night with uh, new moon. So yeah, there is, but also there is a lot of uh, mysteries in this field that we don't know it, and that's very exciting. Thank you. 
Wow. Thank you so much. And great job with your presentation. Thank you. We have a question from Nicole Jimeno. Okay, yes. Um, thanks for your presentation, Kuwait, and I really love your slides. Great talk. Uh, well, my question is, is there an evolutionary reason to explain these biological rhythms? Yes, and there are just hypotheses. There are like uh, three, four hypotheses that are very popular, but the most popular one is the the one that explain the synchronization between the individuals of one species. Like uh, in an evolutionary point of view, if you uh, can find some twins in the nature uh, in which you can make this synchronization, you uh, you can improve the rate, for example, of reproduction of uh, rate um, births, and that, of course, it's a, a evolutionary advance for the species. Okay, thank you, Clayton. Thank you. Awesome, and we have a question from Marta Puente in the chat. Marta asks, do we humans present some kind of biological rhythm that's related to the moon? Yeah, that's a very controversial question. Uh, and in fact, uh, one of our mentors, uh, Steve Thor, uh, she he shared with us some uh, conversations that he had with one uh, doctor professor uh, of Stanford. And he, for this moment, they mm, we have some studies but they have different um, results. Like um, there are no concrete results at the moment. Some studies say yes, we have some rims uh, controlled by the moon, but other studies say no, we don't have any of that or, or we lose it in some point of our history as humans. Mm -hmm.